We just keep getting new exciting images from the James Webb Space Telescope. For example, look at this and take a look at the spot. This is a picture of Jupiter and its great red spot. This storm is big enough to swallow our Earth. Oh my goodness. To the left of this is the shadow of Europa. That is one of Jupiter's orbiting moons. So you might be wondering why is this image sepia toned? It's not as brilliant as the other James Webb Space Telescope images that we've seen while this was on purpose. This image was designed for engineering purposes, so it wasn't processed in the same way as the first images we got were. So of course I wanted to ask our favorite astronomer for his thoughts about these stunning new images. In fact, Jonathan McDowell has tweeted a lot about this and he's been pretty excited to see the community involvement and excitement over Webb. I've had some criticisms of the JWST project over the decades, waiting for this to happen, but what they've built an amazing instrument. It's working really well. It's gonna tell us a lot about the universe. I think what people maybe need to understand is it's it's not a replacement for Hubble. It, it does different things. Uh, one of the main questions it's gonna answer is how galaxies in the universe have evolved from the early days of the universe to now. Now, one thing that isn't obvious in the initial picture is the spectroscopic data along with the picture. The spectrum of the faint objects in the background let us see the characteristic fingerprint of different atoms in those galaxies. Webb isn't just for looking at extremely distant objects, it also allows us to look in more detail than we could have before at relatively nearby objects. This tweet thread that Jonathan shared, he says, was his most successful set of tweets he's ever published with over 39,000 likes. It makes him very happy, but it also shows just how much interest James Webb Space Telescope is getting from the public. On Jonathan's website, he actually made an article about his Twitter thread, Why Astronomers Love Spectra. He wants to talk about why astronomers are so excited by this image. So he breaks it down and compares what we're looking at in this image to music. So you can read this article and I will link it in the description. But he says that this data tells us two things. Number one, there's oxygen in that galaxy. And two, oxygen atoms behave the same billions of years ago and billions of light years away as they do here and now. This is a profound proof of the unity of physics. And Jonathan ends this Twitter rant by saying, yes, you can can do science with pretty pictures, but often it is the spectra that tell us the whole story. Another fun fact of the day may come as a surprise to some of you, and it's in fact how the telescope is storing these beautiful, brilliant images. According to this Engadget article, Webb carries a tiny 68 gigabyte SSD. Now, this is enough to handle a day's worth of JWST images, but not a whole lot more. So why does this $10 billion satellite use such tiny storage in comparison? Well, Webb is a million miles from Earth where it's full of radiation. So the SSD must be radiation hardened along with all the other instruments. Now this SSD can be filled in nearly two hours. Webb collects far more data than Hubble ever did. 57 gigabytes compared to one to two gigabytes per day. And it can transfer all that data back to Earth in just about four and a half hours. That first image is of the, uh, this cluster of galaxies about five billion light years away. And it's sitting in front of other galaxies in the same direction that are more like 10 to 13 billion mm -hmm. light years away mm -hmm. and distorting their images because it's their light comes from those distant galaxies to us. Uh, the gravity of the cluster in the middle bends that light and distorts mm. the images like a mirage. Oh, wow. So that's why you see all the like twisty, long, like sausagey images. In the image, they're like distant galaxies whose light is being distorted by, in fact, by not by the visible galaxies in the cluster that you see, but by the dark matter in the cluster mostly. Now, part of how it will do that is using Hubble to look at nearby galaxies and then using Webb to look at the detail in the early galaxies. He says for this reason, it's not all about JWST. It's about Webb used in concert with all the other tools astronomers have, like Hubble, Chandra, ground-based telescopes, etc. Each of those images, right, there's like a year's worth of three or four graduate students looking at the data in order wow. to turn that into science. There's so much information 
encoded in those images. Now, a couple of you have mentioned this in the comments in previous videos I made about web, so I figured I would address it in this video, in part because Jonathan and I also talked about it in our conversation. The fact is that all of us in the community kind of hate the name James Webb. So much so that some people only use the acronym when talking about it. Last year, NPR ran this article addressing this, reporting that NASA does not plan to rename the James Webb Space Telescope, despite concerns about it being named after former NASA Administrator James Webb, who this article says went along with government discrimination against gay and lesbian employees in the 1950s and 60s. Webb was a bureaucrat, but he was also, you know, allegedly at least, and the evidence seems to stack up, but he was more than even average for the time, homophobic and trying to root out homosexuals in, in the government. So there's a whole internal thing about that. So it was chosen many years ago by a guy called Sean O'Keefe, who was NASA administrator. Uh, and he was not a guy with a space background. He, he was a manager who'd been like Navy secretary. Mm -hmm. He admired James Webb because James Webb was a businessman who took over NASA in the 1960s, did some good things, right? He, he protected the science budget during Apollo. You know, he, was, he was generally seen as an effective NASA boss. Apparently NASA told NPR it has investigated the matter and they decided to keep the telescope's name as is. Quote, we have found no evidence at this time that warrants changing the name of the James Webb Space Telescope, according to NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. Normally, historically, NASA telescopes have been named by astronomers after scientists or astronomers. Hubble, Chandra, Spitzer naming a major telescope after a businessman who was a NASA manager was a big departure. So we're sort of torn because, and so a lot of us are calling it JW or yeah. something like that, right? To avoid actually giving Webb any, uh, any credit. The next space telescope, I'm much happier about the naming. That's going to be the, the Nancy Gro Grace Roman space telescope. And Nancy was uh, one of the leading astronomers of, of NASA in the early days, she started the whole space astronomy program. When, what's the progress on that? Well, you know, these big projects, they're expensive and they always go behind schedule. And, right. and uh, so I'm not quite sure where things stand right now, but the, it's a few years out. And, okay. uh, yeah, and it's going to be, unlike Webb, which looks at a very small area of sky, in great detail, Roman is going to look at big areas of sky and do like a census of the galaxies. And that's going to help us understand dark energy. Imagine how much closer we could be if we all cooperated as one world. Yeah, I'd like that as long as you do it my way. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's the problem, right? But imagine. Yeah, I, I want us to all be one world, but, but it better be a way that I'm comfortable with. And right. So, you know, right. That's, that's the deep problem of life, really. Yep. So I want to know from you, is the name something that bothers you? Is this something that's even been on your radar? Or are you perfectly content with the name of the James Webb Space Telescope? All in all, we are so excited to see new images, spectacular images, and there's so much more to come from this incredible telescope. So we're all looking forward to that. Thank you so much for watching this video, sort of a part two, because there's just so much to talk about with Webb. So I hope that you guys are all happy having a great day. I have some really exciting content on the way. And of course, I'm gearing up for my trip to Austin for the Tesla shareholder meeting. So I'm pretty excited about that. If you guys are going to be there, make sure to let me know in the comments. Maybe we can all do a fun little meetup in Austin. I would love to meet some of you guys. So that's it for now, but I'll see you in the next video.